up have been involved in schools rugby since 1981 and find themselves now an integral part of something very special on the Irish sporting scene. And one man who's directly involved in schools rugby, a school selector, is Noel Turley. Noel, is it possible to put your finger on what makes school rugby that little bit special? Well, I think it's the um, excitement, the unpredictability, and I hope the sense of adventure that still remains in schools rugby that makes it attractive to people. Also, you get the old boy network who return year after year to relive past glories, and of course you get a big turnout of parents. And all of that gives the Schools Cup a special atmosphere which you don't find in many other aspects of rugby other than perhaps an in international, I think, a schools rugby Good schools rugby cup match is about the nearest thing you get to the atmosphere in Lansdowne Road for an international. Well, I know, know that a lot of the clubs must be envious of the large crowds. I noticed for the St. Michael's turn your game in the first round of the cup, there was over 6,000 people in Donnybrook. Well, that match was got a lot of publicity in the press and was billed as probably one of the best schools cup matches that we were going to have this year. Also, both sides had played an excellent game last year in the Cup, and so there was a, an expectancy from people that they would get a good game, and we like to think that they did. They got good value for the money on the day. Right, Noel, and, uh, well, they, they certainly did, of course, though I'm an old turn your boy, so, <laughs> and you're, you being a Michael's man, I don't know who got the value, <laughs> however. But uh, Noel, tell me something, Seven Up's involvement in this whole competition is extremely important. Yes. When the whole aspect of sponsorship was discussed at the school's committee, we were very pleased that a sponsor such as 7up should come along and offer uh, sponsorship to the schools. You, you can't take every product. Not every product is suitable uh, as a sponsor to schools rugby. And 7up have been very sympathetic, very understanding, and uh, very good financially for schools. And we certainly are delighted with 7-Up's involvement and we hope it will continue for many years. Lovely. Thanks very much, Noel. Thank you, Jerry. Okay. That's great. Did you get that? He's just shooting off the end of it here.
Well, you're very welcome along to Lansdowne Road for the final of the 7-Up Leinster School Senior Cup between Clongoes Wood and St. Michael's. Well, these two sides have met before in the Senior Cup, most notably back in 1978. That year was of particular significance because that year St. Michael's got to the semi-finals for the first time in their history, but alas were beaten by Clongos by six points to three. And that defeat was uh, somewhat hard to bear for St. Michael's because even though they had a short history in school senior rugby, they had a realistic chance of taking the trophy for the first time. However, Clongos, for their part, went on to beat Turn Your in the final by uh, nine points to six, thanks to a certain extent to the boot of Greg Dilger, and in fact took the trophy for the second time in their history. Well, both of these sides this afternoon are well measured, and it would be a brave man to predict the outcome. But one who might try is Jim Whelan, the public relations manager of 7UP Butlers Ireland. Jim, is that an unfair question? Yes, I think it is. I'm not into the business of uh, prophecy. Uh, I think it's a very evenly matched game. Uh, you have uh, two teams who uh, are certainly, they've never met at this stage of the competition before. Indeed, I think it's Michael's first final, and uh, I think uh, Tlongaos have only won it twice. Um, I think, judging from the semi-final performances and uh, the earlier rounds, it seems that it's one of the most evenly balanced game in years. Well now, Jim, certainly uh, the School Senior Cup has made a significant contribution in the lives of many lads who have gone through the colleges and who've played in cup matches. And one must note the contribution now being made by 7UP to Leinster Schools Rugby. Uh, yes, we're, regard we're very proud to be sponsoring this competition. Uh, we've been doing so for about eight or nine years now, and it's uh, one of the most prestigious sporting events uh, at this level in, in the country, and indeed we're very proud to, to be associated with it. All right, Jim, thank you very much for those words. I know you're anxious to dash down to the box. We're a little bit cramped up here at the moment. Well, it'll be interesting to see this afternoon how this game goes. One imagines that St. Michael's will rely to a large extent on their pack, in particular their back row, to give them the type of possession that will allow their master out half, Mark Evans, to dictate the game. However, watch out for Danny Rock and say, uh, on the Clongo side. He leads his team from the core of the action, and any loose ball that pops around, particularly near the opposition's line, while well, Dermot Redden, the vice captain at scrum half, will be onto them like a shot. I'm looking forward to an enthralling encounter, and I'm sure the 15,000 plus here in Lansdowne Road this afternoon will be doing so as well. Well, Sean Murray, the uh, Michaels fullback, preparing to get this game underway. The rain beginning to come down here in Lansdowne Road, and one hopes that it won't affect the conditions too much. Barry McCarthy, who had a magnificent game for Congos in the semi-final, particularly in the second game, the replay, finding touch midway between the 22 and the halfway line. While well, Clongos will be expecting a lot from Barry McCarthy this afternoon, He's particularly uh, proficient at the breakaway and one notes uh, that in the semi-final he broke away from inside his own 22 a couple of times and linking up nicely with his outside backs causing uh, Rock all sorts of problems. So Fergal Egan leading the ball to the line out. McCarthy unable to hold the greasy ball but uh, referee Philip Gray a scrum down to Clongos. Dermot Redden. Little chip kick, Mark Evans going back, but leaving it for his full back, Sean Murray. And the purple jerseys are there in numbers, cleaned up nicely for St. Michael's by Robert Price. Now, Mark Evans. 
Long spiral kick to the near side over the head of Pat Horan. Horan's kick straight into touch. And we're joined up in the commentary position here by John O'Shea. John, what do you think will be the uh, factors that will separate either of these sides this afternoon? Well, Jerry, I think the conditions are going to have a heavy bearing on the outcome. Uh, it's not a great day for football. A uh, lot of wind around, uh, we, and as you mentioned, we've had a bit of rain. And unfortunately, I think we might see a little bit too much kicking today. Uh, both sides very evenly matched and uh, neither side is going to want to make the mistake that's going to cost the match so certainly i'd imagine for the first half anyway you're going to see both evans and mccarthy indulge in quite a lot of kicking perhaps gary owns and kicking to the blind side hopefully later on in the game you'll see more open play but it's very very delicately poised game uh, on the evidence of the semi-finals i think we, we could have uh, something approaching a last five minute dramatic uh, end to this game Thank you, John. Well, I'm sure the large crowd here in Lansdowne would love a cliffhanger. Although I'm not so sure that the coaches are the uh, immediate supporters of both schools would. Further Egan. Rooney trying to get that ball in the line out over his head. It will be a scrum down the Congos. Michaels, of course, who were two to one on by one bookmaker to win this trophy at the outset. Most impressive this season, beaten. Dermot Redden again, a lovely little grubber kick up along the ground, linking up nicely there with his back row. Lawrence Hayes in the thick of the action. Hayes, another man who had a magnificent uh, semi-final replay game against Rock. Back of the line now, uh, Stephen Montgomery trying to get a hand on the ball. And the breeze is swirling around quite a bit here in Lansdowne. If anything, it's favouring Clongos at the moment. Interesting to see, note there, how Clongo is getting the drive on in the scrum. This will be a key area this afternoon. Michaels with that fine front row of the Egan twin brothers and Paddy Walsh. Up against it now is Clongo's putting on the, wheel, on the wheel and Mark Evans. Safely finding touch, but Lawrence Hayes was through there like a rocket. And one gets the impression that uh, he could cause quite a lot of problems this afternoon, particularly if the ball is greasy and is left run loose. So Danny Rock to the back of the line out. Hayes going down on it. But again, it'll be a scrum down to St. Michael's. Interesting, Clongo's keeping the ball away from big Mark Duffy and uh, Julian Cavanagh there in the line-out. And of course, uh, Stephen Rooney, who's also uh, a ball winner for Michaels. Clongo's again with the wheel, and David Widger will have to pick that ball at the back. And again, Dermot Redden, a little bit of soccer over the 22. And putting Michaels under all sorts of pressure underneath their own goal posts. Clongo's piling in the numbers, but it'll be a scrum down. Intelligent bit of play there by uh, Dermot Redden. And just an indication there of how difficult it'll be to pick this ball up. So anxious moments, John, these for St. Michael's. Yes, Jerry, that was a great piece of work by Redden there. He did precisely the right thing, used his boot when, it, as you say, had he tried to pick it up, he probably would have knocked it on. Very, very fine player, this lad. 
combos. Steadying the scrum. Redden with McCarthy looking for the drop of goal. Striking it nicely and it's there. And so after seven minutes of play in this final, Clongos have opened their account. Yes, Jerry, he did again the right thing there. There's nothing like points on the board to give a side confidence. It was due to the scrum half that they were in that position. A good heel, a good pass, and the out half took the right option. Just the perfect start for them. Well, certainly one wonders, uh, John, what St. Michael's must be thinking. They, I mean, they, throughout this whole season, they have been uh, hot favourites to take this trophy. And then that's uh, quite a heavy mantle for any uh, side to carry, particularly when you're at schoolboy level and particu particularly in the unpredictability of the cup. That's very true, Jerry. But then one must remember that they lost one of their best players, their centre, early on. And I think that reduced the odds. Also, the fact that they didn't play all that well in the semi-final and Clongos were so impressive in beating Black Rock second time round. I think even the most ardent Michaels fan went into that, this match feeling that this was a 50-50 game. And one suspects that the players felt likewise. So I think really uh, it won't have uh, dampened their spirits too much to see them go down 3-0. Uh, it's the sort of game that's going to be a topsy-turvy affair, one imagines. So uh, it's all to play for. It's all to play for. There's no question about that. So Barry McCarthy with the penalty on his own 22. Safely finding touch just on halfway line. So Owen Bennett and uh, opposite Bernard Murphy there, the two number sevens at the back of the line out, well taken there for Clongos by Robert Dalton. Montgomery. Redden, little chip kick, Sean Murray having to come across and uh, Michael's giving away the penalty there for the late tackle on Dermot Redden. Mark Evans there just having a word with Philip Gray and uh, Adam McNulty just uh, getting words of encouragement there from Danny Rock indicating his intentions to have a shot at goal. Jerry, one wonders with all the coaching that goes into these teams prior to these matches how anyone he can be so unbelievably stupid to give away three points like this, provided of course he kicks it. Uh, it was obvious that the referee was going to see it. There was no need to lay tackle the player and uh, it is quite extraordinary that uh, at senior level as well we get this type of nonsense. So, um, you know, they, they may have to pay for this now and it's... Uh, it's, it's it's sad, really, when you consider, as I say, the, the amount of hours that they prepare uh, for games of this nature. Well, Adam McNulty punishes them for it. And I suppose uh, maybe the, uh, a little bit of over-enthusiasm given the nerves of final day. However... 11 and a half minutes into the first half and Clongos have extended their lead to six points. Michael's driving in from the restart and Congo's going over the top. Well, this is the very thing that uh, Michael's need to get back into this. Sean Murray, who is a uh, prolific point-scoring fullback from the boot, 
Just a chat in there with uh, Mark Evans, and uh, they've decided he's going to have a shot at goal. Mark Evans, of course, who's the captain of Michaels. It'll be a difficult one for Sean Murray. He's kicking into the swirling breeze. And there you can see the distance. Striking it well, and it's hanging, but just hanging there in the breeze past the near upright and wide. But that was a great kick by uh, Sean Murray. But so the score remains, Clongo 6, Michael's yet to open their account. From the restart, the ball bouncing off the chest of Julian Kavner. Stephen Rooney forever clearing up. So Jonathan Bradley feed the scrum just on the Clongo's 10 meter line and a good scrummage this by Michaels taken by Widger looking for space and he has support and Jonathan Bradley Mark Duffy up driving towards the 22 trying to feed the ball back inside to Owen Bennett Michaels needing this ball Evans under a lot of pressure having to step back into the box and launching the high up and under but slicing it off the side of his boot Well, Clongos were up very quickly there and, uh, well, maybe somewhat lucky to get away with the potential offside, however, driving Mark Evans back into the box. And gaining themselves a line out just outside uh, their own 22. Tapped down by John Spicer, but Jim Redden won't want that kind of ball, and he's under all sorts of pressure as the blue jersey's driving forward. And certainly, uh, John, this is a day when you don't want loose ball like that being tapped back to your scrum half. No, uh, he should really have said not known at this address here, and uh, more or less flung a boot at it or something. Yes, it's not easy to catch two-handedly today, and uh, the battle in the line is going to be one of the most interesting features because Duffy... Uh, for Michaels is particularly good on the two hands but uh, there's nobody going to be that dominant I think because it isn't too easy as I say to, to get both hands to it Mark Evans on the switch pass back inside Robert Price unable to hold up to the uh, hold on to the ball and uh, Congo's driving out of defence Nicely stepped back inside by Jonathan Badley. He finds a little bit of a gap and finds Fergal Egan up in support just short of the Clongos 22. Nice bit of link play there between the uh, scrum half and the hooker. And noticeably now in the last five minutes, Michael's beginning to get settled down in this game and beginning to uh, put on a little bit of pressure. Sixteen minutes gone. Steady scrum, Widger picks, Bradley unable to hold on to the loose ball. John Lavin put under all sorts of pressure and uh, the ball scrambled away to touch. So Michaels, who used Stephen Rooney up at number two on the line-out. This time going towards the ball, back, tap back, Jonathan Bradley coming back, and Rooney manhandled into touch there by Dermot Redden. So 
So Danny Rock tapped back by Brian Duggan for uh, Clongos. And you can see there Philip Gray indicating Michael's going over the top. Barry McCarthy finding a good touch inside the Michaels half. Well, no doubt you're able to hear in the background the uh, large crowd here in Lansdowne Road in full voice. Always a marvellous occasion, the school's final. Mark Evans there having to do a little bit of juggling with that one and he runs into uh, the Clongos pack. Evans did well to recover, it looked as if that ball was going astray. Michaels, but Clongo's putting on the wheel, and again it has to be picked by David Widger. Good mauling this by Michaels, and they win themselves a penalty. Well, that was good tight play by the Michaels pack. Clongo's having put on the wheel, and Michaels coming away with the ball. John Spicer, number four on the line out with the uh, green headband. That ball being thrown over the back to him as Redden gets a boot to the ball. Well taken by Sean Murray. Lovely bit of play by the Michaels for backfielding that ball on the run. All the attributes, John, there of the Gaelic player that, uh, well, I believe his father is. Yes, there was, uh, Jerry. Yeah, Sean is a fine player, and I think Michaels might be making a mistake by not bringing him more into the game. They had uh, some very good possession there for seven or eight minutes, and they elected to take everything from the base of the scrum, either the number eight or the scrum half, uh, attempted to probe. But uh, they weren't getting very far against a very resolute defence, and I think uh, they would be wise now to try and spread the ball a bit. David Widger getting a hand to the back, of that ball at the back of the line out. Good scrummage this by Clongos. Getting the wheel against the head. Stephen Montgomery, affectionately known as Monty among his uh, teammates. And Michaels giving away another penalty. And again, uh, Adam McNulty being called up. That's the uh, Michaels 10 meter line there you see him on. He's about 15 meters in from touch. Quite a difficult kick by any stretch of the imagination. Gives you some indication there of the distance. Well, he strikes it well, and he had the uh, the distance, and he had the height, but uh, unfortunately not the direction going past the far upright. And so, after 22 minutes of the first half, Congo still leading by that drop goal and penalty.
So Mark Evans has accomplished Michael's out half. And Owen Bennett striking on the loose ball and sending Dermot Finnegan back towards his own 22. Well, his kick there just bouncing, unfortunately, off the knees of Colm Gorman. But Owen Bennett there uh, striking on the loose ball and uh, gaining quite a bit of uh, territory for St. Michael's. Drizzle still coming down here in Lansdowne. Redden trying a little bit of dummy. He's picked this time and Rooney's off the back of the scrum, but uh, Michaels have given away the penalty. And I think Stephen Rooney there <laughs> shaking his head in amazement of wondering what he did wrong. Barry McCarthy, consistent as ever. There you can see Robert Dalton, number four, second from the back of the line out far. Clongos jumps it, jumping opposite David Widger. Wager getting his hand to the ball, Rooney unable to clean up cleanly. on the blind side well tackled down nicely there by uh, Colin Gorman ball being knocked forward in the tackle to be uh, Michael Scrum Long goes putting on the wheel and giving away the penalty and one feels John that some of the momentum has gone out of this game at the moment yes Jerry I suppose the most disappointing feature of the uh, first 25 minutes is the fact that we haven't yet had a back movement from either side and after all the game was designed uh, for 15 players and we'd like to see 15 players involved now today we have to perhaps make excuses because the conditions are not good at the same time, uh, the team that's behind, uh, I think, should want to move the ball because uh, they haven't created an opportunity yet to score. Uh, Clongos have had three chances of scoring and they've scored twice, so they'll be pretty happy and they won't mind really uh, what sort of uh, conditions are underfoot or what sort of uh, style they adopt. They're the ones that are ahead. But I would have thought that Michaels at this stage now would be very keen to uh, test the tackle and uh, I'm surprised that they haven't uh, attempted to do so. Thanks, John. Well, we've got nine minutes to go to half time. And one wonders uh, what difference Nicholas Moore would have made in the uh, in the St. Michael's backline, whether he would have offered a little bit more confidence. However, uh, it is noticeable that Michaels really haven't got the ball to run with so far in this game. Well, uh, anxious moments, these for Clongos. You can't exactly see from this distance who's injured there, but uh, Kenny Murray's on the field and they've had to... Uh, and he's looking rather concerned and it looks as if uh, Clongos will be temporarily reduced down to 14 men. might be uh, Stephen Montgomery. So Congo's temporarily reduced down to 14 men with a scrum midway between the 22 and the halfway line. Jonathan Bradley in quickly there on the loose ball, but the ball going uh, loose on the tackle. Referee letting play go on. 
Pat O'Ren unable to hold on against the loose ball and uh, Adam McNulty inside his own 22 and Trongo's having to play that ball away but the ball being knocked forward it'll be a scrum down to Michaels well the conditions now are getting very difficult so will Michaels be able to capitalise on the fact that Trongo's have 14 players on the field six minutes plus injury time to half time Michaels picking at the back Back inside, Stephen Rooney. James Redden intercepting there, but Mark Evans, the switch pass. Robert Price, tackle down. Michael still driving in there, and they need this ball, but they get the scrum down. This is good pressure by St. Michael's. And happily for Clangos. Montgomery able to retake his place at the back of the scrum. So Michaels now with five minutes to go to half time. David Widger again picking out the back. Jonathan Bradley, Mark Evans looking for a little chip kick. But Pat Hurahan. Blocking it down well for Clongos. So Michael's now the ones putting on the wheel in the scrum and uh, anxious moments these for Clongos. Oh, dear Madredden again, a good drive this by the pack and well held in at the back there by Montgomery. Well, this will be interesting. Uh, while the referee is giving the uh, penalty to St. Michael's, um, I guess he imagined uh, or he believes, in fact, that that ball had come out of the scrum and was taken back in again. John, uh, what did you think about that? I think that's what he decided, Jerry. yes. And this is a chance that Michael's really can't afford to miss out on. They've had good possession now the last few minutes and again they have decided to take the ball at number eight and uh, try on the narrow side rather than uh, opening up the play and uh, it's due in the main to some tremendous defensive work on the part of Congos that the score remains as it is six nil but uh, psychologically now this is a dreadfully important kick for Michaels and for Mark Evans Well, he's just outside the 22. About 10 metres in from touch. Yeah. Strikes it well, but curls it past. The far upright and uh, Bernard Murphy there calling for the mark underneath his own post. Safe hands there by the uh, Clongos wing forward. But Mark Evans will certainly be disappointed with that kick. That's a fine kick by Bernard Murphy. He'll be happy with that one. Finally, a very good touch. And relieves the pressure for Clongos. So with two minutes plus injury time to half time, Clongos holding on to their lead. And defying Michaels the opportunity to put some points on the board. So Michaels again trying to feed to the back of the line out, but Robert Dalton get a, gets a hand on it. But Michaels coming up with the ball, and Stephen Rooney opting to uh, try and find some space down along the blind side. A crashing tackle there by Stephen Montgomery. Well, uh, John mentioned the uh, noticeable defence there by uh, Clongos, and certainly that was a good indication over there with Stephen Montgomery putting in a crushing tackle on oh, Stephen Rooney. Redden 
Little trip kick up along the blind side, well taken by Sean Murray, tackled on halfway line, and uh, Congo's in front of the ball. Well, we're joined again by uh, Jim Whelan. Uh, Jim, as we move into the last moments of the first half, although Clongos are leading by six points to nil, one gets the impression that there's very little separating these sides. Yes, Mike is an call out of this game. They're playing into the rain and the wind, and uh, they've been on the attack and haven't been able to put it to good scores on the board. Uh, I've been impressed by their fullback. He's caught a number of very good balls under pressure, and that last one is a field of exceptionally well. Well, uh, Jim, if you were down there at half-time, I mean, what do you think you'd be saying to, uh, to St. Michael's for the second half? Continue as you have been in the first half. Well, thanks, Jim. That's exactly what they're trying to do. They're uh, Owen Bennett running into a sea of uh, purple jerseys there on the Clongos uh, 22-metre line, but Mark Evans now moving his back line. Gary Ryan, first time we've seen him. John Lavin. Loose ball again on the ground, just bouncing off the hand there of Mark Evans. And he just, uh, well, left-footed uh, taps it into touch. And I think he uh, just shook his head there in uh, disappointment. However, we've played 30 seconds now of injury time. Michael is still piling on the pressure. Still avoiding that. Nicely taken in the line out by Michaels by Mark Duffy. And you can just watch that one bounce into touch. And the big question now to be asked is uh, can Clongos hold out to half time or can Michaels manage to uh, put some points on the board? Danny Rock, well cleaned up by Fergal Egan, good play by Michaels, the pass, great tackling there in the centre by Clangos and Barry McCarthy, the man coming away with the ball, and uh, Pat Horan is the one whose kick goes straight in touch, but that's typical of the way the Clangos play themselves out of defence, and as the referee uh, Philip Gray blows his whistle for half, Clown go to their penalty and drop goal lead of six points. Michaels yet to put some points on the board. Well, so from the seven up uh, blimp, our bubble, we begin the second half, and one wonders who will be having the bubbly uh, later on this afternoon. Uh, it'll be inter it's interesting to note that, uh, particularly in the latter part of the first half, Michael's beginning to win some ball, particularly in the lineouts, and uh, Mark Evans beginning to move his back line. Well, that ball being left loosely there by uh, St. Michael's and Colin Gorman having to uh, pick it up and find touch just inside his own 22. So Danny Rock, again, both sides throwing the ball to the back of the line-out. Montgomery tapping that down, uh, Robert Dalton cleaning up, but uh, crooked in the line-out. And it's interesting to note, John, that both of the sides have uh, continued to throw the ball to the back of the line-out in the difficult conditions. Yes, I think they're hoping for the breaking ball, really, Jerry. And uh, even if you lose the ball there, there's always a chance that you can come through on it. I think that's the philosophy behind that one. Um, these opening minutes are going to be crucial, particularly for Michaels. Well, giving away the indirect penalty, Barry McCarthy moving his back line. Brendan O'Farrell trying to find a gap. Redden. And Tom goes moving the ball nicely away. There's an extra man on the outside, but uh, James Lenehan there taking the wrong option, unfortunately. He had Dermot Finnegan outside him, but it's still Tom goes. Barry McCarthy looks, tries to find a little bit of a gap. 
Good running this by Clongos, Brendan O'Farrell. Clongos now underneath the Michaels goalposts, needing that ball back. They've, they have it back inside. Uh, Brendan O'Farrell coming here to the near side of the field, finding a little bit of gap, stepping back inside. He's back inside one, he's back inside two. Tackle down just short of the line. And the ball knocking fo gone forward in the tackle, and it'll be a scrum down to St. Michael's. But uh, what a magnificent bit of attacking play there by the uh, Clongos backline. And one felt, uh, John, that they were going to go all the way to the line there, particularly on the far side. Yes, Jerry, that was the finest piece of play in the match to date. Magnificent bit of running there by O'Farrell, and very unfortunate not to get over. Beautiful play. Well, Michaels now with their own scrum, trying to drive out of defence. And Carlos giving away the penalty, breaking across the line of the scrum. And so I'm sure Mark Evans will be delighted to be able to relieve the pressure in these opening minutes of the second half. And there's a fine kick by the Michaels out half. Danny Rock, Clongo's Irish schoolboy scrum half. Nicely tapped down, Barry McCarthy over the gain line, over the 10 metre line, tackled by his opposite number. Ball loose on the ground, purple jerseys driving in. Brendan O'Farrell, Dermot Finnegan, well tackled down by Stephen Rooney. And Colin Gorman picking up on the loose ball, good bit of defence there by St Michael's. But we've had more open play in the first uh, four minutes of the second half than we did in the whole of the first half. Montgomery again holding and... Uh, Congos again giving away the penalty that they've given away so many times, breaking the bind. Evans using the breeze and bringing play into the Clongos half. Scrappy line out. St. Michael's, who have had such a short history in schools rugby. 1970 being their first year playing as an entity on their own. In fact, had their first senior team back in 1975 with uh, as Noel Turley told me earlier on they had only 18 boys eligible to play and at that stage they lost to Scaries in the weak section well they certainly have come a long way in that short space of time and that's a great credit to Noel Turley Gary Coakley and the rest of the people who help out down in Aylesbury Road Stephen Rooney will be kicking himself for that giving away the penalty and uh, Jim Redden anxious to get a play underway but uh, leaving in for Barry McCarthy <laughs> well Barry McCarthy finding another safe touch and uh, I must admit I've been most impressed 
with this out half his touch kicking has been immaculate throughout the games I've seen him in this competition and I'm particularly impressed with the way that he runs the ball especially out of defence Stephen Rooney cleaning up in the line out uh, Robert Dalton getting a hand to him getting a massive drive on in the scrum but the front rows breaking up and of course a feature now of schools rugby the referees very quick to blow up with any breakdown in the scrum particularly in the front row Michael's doing well David Widger picking with that ball's loose and Jonathan Bradley well tackled down there by Lawrence Hayes. And uh, one notices there that Adam McNulty, the Clongos fullback, just coming up and having a word with his captain, Danny Rock. Danny Rock again towards the back of the line out. David Widger getting a hand to the ball. Uh, again another uh, crooked in in the line out and I wouldn't like to count the, man the amount of uh, crooked line outs we've had this afternoon nine minutes gone in the second half still that six points separating the sides and Congo's getting a massive drive on in the strongest loose ball Redden tapping it forward Colin Gordon under all, Gorman under all sorts of pressure tackled down on his own goal line and scrambling his way into touch well, Colin Gorman did well there because he had a sea of Clongo's jerseys piling in on top of him. But these are anxious moments for St. Michael's. The last thing they want to do is to allow a large gap open between th themselves and uh, Clongo's. So Danny Rock, well taken down by Clongo's in the line out. James Redden, Barry McCarthy trying to run past Evans, well tackled down, good defence by Michaels. Stephen Rooney's in there as well, as was uh, Owen Bennett getting the tackle in. Well, John, anxious moments these for Michaels. Yes, indeed. McCarthy certainly isn't afraid to have a cut, Jerry, but um, and he's doing well. At the same time, I think he should realise that outside of me has a man in O'Farrell who's well capable of slipping the tackle, as he proved just before half time. There was it just afterwards, and uh, maybe if he let it out a little bit more, uh, we'd see some real running from this lad. Well, Prong was picking from the back of the scrum. It looked like Montgomery was the one that picked that ball up, but uh, up comes Rooney with the ball for Michaels well Rooney did extremely well there and uh, Callum Gorman it is, is again and Congo's giving away the penalty well Stephen Rooney did extremely well there to uh, dive in on the loose ball Danny Rock just inquiring the referee's decision So Mark Evans opting for the safety of the touch and a nice spiral kick. Vincent Murray and uh, Mark Nugent will be pleased with the way things are going for Clongos at the moment. Paddy Walsh driving through and uh, Mark Evans a long searching kick back into the box here and uh, Dermot Finnegan under all sorts of pressure there, the ball bouncing. 
off his hands and giving away the knock on on uh, the 22. Well, this is the first real incursion into uh, Clongo's territory by Michaels in the second half. Jonathan Bradley, Mark Evans taking that ball high and opting for the high up and under. McNulty's underneath and can't quite hold on to it, the ball's loose. And Michaels giving away the penalty and... Uh, Play held up for a moment, Paddy Walsh requiring some attention. Well, Paddy Walsh there, um, happily able to resume his position after Gary Coakley, one of the evergreen Coakleys. A fine rugby player himself, now taken to massage. I'm sure Gary will be delighted to hear that, Congos. Playing, them way, playing themselves out of uh, difficulty temporarily, finding touch outside their own 22. <laughs> so Ferga leading to the front of the line now, Paddy Walsh coming around and cleaning up and barging there. In the line out, and in fact, uh, John, this really is Michael's first a scoring opportunity in this game, real scoring opportunity. Well, perhaps second one, uh, Jerry. You remember um, Mark had his free just uh, before uh, half time when he, he was a little bit short with from about 30 yards. This now is relatively easy for him. You know, he likes to kick from the right hand side of the field, even though as a right footed kicker, he, he, the left would be his preferable one, but he's well able to kick from the right and he's got a nice little win behind him. He should be able to drag this one in. He's also the captain of the side. He understands just how important it is for his team. And if ever a side needed a boost, Mike was needed at this moment. Strikes it well, and the flags are up. Well, the roars that you hear in Lansdowne after 50 minutes of the second half are a mixture of delight and relief. And so, Jim and Michaels are right back in this game now. Looks like we'll have a classical struggle on our hands. As Jim said, maybe somewhat against the run of the play, but uh, you need to take your opportunities when they come your way. And uh, Owen Bennett from the loose restart, launching the high up and under, but well taken out of defence for Clongos by Dermot Redden. And uh, Sean Murray unable to feel that one there. You can see the disappointment on the Michaels fullback as that one just. Uh, Bounced around just out of his grasp. <laughs> Stephen Rooney doing well on the line now, taking it down cleanly. Mark Evans under pressure inside his own 22, having to step onto the left boot. And it has been a noticeable feature of this game. Again, the pressure that uh, Clongos have been able to put Mark Evans under. They really aren't giving him a chance. And uh, Lawrence Hayes, one of the lads uh, guilty of uh, keeping Mark under control. John Spicer getting a hand to the ball, but a little bit scrum down to Michaels. Mark Evans again opting for the kick back into the box. Dermot Finnegan taking this one, a little grubber kick along the ground. Well taken up by Sean Murray, who does well. 
But his kick will be left to run all the way over the goal line by Adam McNulty. Well, Dermot Finnegan getting away with that one. It uh, went through his hands, but uh, Philip Gray feeling that it wasn't knocked forward. And in fact, I would be inclined to agree with the referee on that one. So, 18 minutes gone in the second half. Six points to three in favour of Clongos. Alan Gorman. Well, Michael certainly are going for the Gary Owens this afternoon. Adam McNulty is safe as houses underneath him, but now the pressure is on Clongos. And interestingly enough, Michael's breaking down to the first two-man line-out of the game. An interesting change of tactics, John. Yes, it's, it's obvious that they're going to allow the front row to have a run at them here. It'll be, yeah, I just hate to see what happens. Well, switching it back to the near side here to Big Mark Duffy and Stephen Rooney as ever up in support. Well, now the excitement beginning to build here in Lansdowne. Michael's needing a good scrum, needing good ball, and doing well. David Widger holding again at the back. Tango scrum at twos and threes. It'll still be a Michael's ball. And uh, <laughs> it's interesting to note how these uh, scrums have chopped and changed in this game. In terms of the dominance, Mark Evans now gets the backline underway. Into the backline comes Sean Murray. Well tackled, passing it back inside to Gary Ryan on the 22. And Clong as well. They looked like they went over on top of the ball, but uh, referee letting play go on. David Wizard trying to find some space. Jonathan Bradley going down on the loose ball. Mark Evans in at scrum half. Gary Ryan. And, uh, well, it'll be a scrum down to Clongos. And, well, John, one must feel that uh, um, Clongos were lucky to get away without giving away a penalty there. Yes, Jerry, it seemed from where we were sitting anyway that a man had gone over the ball and it should have been a penalty directly in front of the post. But I think the referee, um, he missed that one clearly, but he's been very strict, particularly in the line-out. It's not a day for, as we said earlier, two-handed catching. But he uh, tends to blow every second line-out, and uh, I think he could add more to the spectacle of the game if he was... Uh, Less fussy. Thanks, John. Well, well Jim, uh, would you care to speculate where the Seven Up Leinster School Senior Cup is going to end up this evening? Oh, I, 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 earlier in the second half, I thought the Clongos were uh, going to dominate. But Michaels have been coming back in the last uh, ten minutes or so, and it's still very even. Michaels putting the wheel on in the scrum. Well, there was a dramatic dummy there by Dermot Redden. In fact, he fooled me. I thought he had come up with the ball. However, it's still held to the back by Stephen Montgomery. Well, they're going around in circles at the moment. And Clongos are nearly back where they started. Montgomery now picks and feeds it to Lawrence Hayes. But the ball's not forward, and Michaels... With the scrum in a good attacking position. 15 minutes now left in the second half. Plus whatever injury time we have. Widger picking and feeding Bradley. He's over the 22. Out to the far side towards uh, John Lavin. But the ball being thrown rather loosely there in the tackle. But uh, certainly, uh, Michaels look as if they're dangerous down along the blind side there. Uh, David Widger linking up nicely with the scrum half, Bradley. Rain still teeming down here in Lansdowne. Now, 
Trongos again holding the ball at the back. Redden. Uh, gets his kick there away, but Jonathan Bradley was throwing him like a shot. The pressure still on Trongos. Robert Dalton at the back opposite David Widger. Widger is the one who gets his hand to the ball. It's loose, it's on the ground. Mark Evans on the 22, again trying to move his back line with that ball bouncing. And Barry McCarthy fly kicking the ball over halfway line. And Gorman having to go back, but he's well tackled down by James Lenahan. But Trondo's giving away the penalty. the large crowd there a little bit disappointed with the referee's decision on that one and Mark Evans finds touch midway between the 22 and halfway Spicer getting a hand of that ball and Jim of Redden having to clean up as Julian Kavanagh putting in the tackle. Taken down in the line out and cleaned up by Declan Egan. Mark Evans launches the high up and under. Danger moments again, but that one just going too far. And uh, referee indicating that uh, it's a 22 meter restart. And one wondered there for one anxious moment whether that ball was going to come off the hand of uh, Pat Hurahan. the highest one of the afternoon Dermot Redden trying to take that one out of the sky unable to but Clonmouth wing themselves the scrum well, in fact it was Adam McNulty who went high for that ball but still the pressure on Clonmouth Redden, little rubber kick, good safe hands, Sean Murray. And that's good defensive play for Congos by Brendan O'Farrell. Alan Gorman steps past one, steps past two. But just uh, running into Robert Dalton. Montgomery able to do anything about it. Mark Evans. Adam McNulty. As he's done so often this afternoon. To his opposite number, Sean Murray. And he launches a massive kick back down into the Congos 22. And uh, luckily for him, not getting the uh, bounce of the ball. Uh, John, it's noticeable that both sides have opted to uh, kick the ball quite a lot now. Yes, well, one can understand uh, Clongos wanted to do it. They're the ones ahead, and uh, the 
the ball up the field is what they want. But uh, I think Michael's now are becoming a little frustrated. They're the better team at the moment and have been for the last 10 or 15 minutes, but they haven't been able to put points on the board. And the frustration is clearly creeping in. They're making elementary mistakes. It's vital to them now that they control the game and get a score on the board. One gets the impression that if they got one score, they might get two or three. But as things stand, they're still three points behind and there's not all that long to go. Well, John, I mean, do you think that uh, Mark Evans should uh, continue on with the tactic of launching the high up and unders? I don't really, Jerry. in fairness, even though, as I say this now, they'll probably score a try or something like that from one. But I feel that uh, the fullback should be brought in more. Uh, he is well capable of running his strong, and I'd like to see him have a run at the uh, Congo's defence. Jonathan Bradley in there to try and wrestle the ball through for at least for um, Michaels. But going around on the wrong side. So Barry McCarthy. Finds touch. We've got six minutes plus injury time left in this final. Three points separating the sides. Territorial advantage with St. Michael's. Michael's doing well in the line as well, cleaned up by Fergal Egan. Mark Evans this time off the left boot. And this time, uh, Dermot Finnegan, or Pat Huron, I should say, doing well. So this game, which has been played in a continuous drizzle, now moving into the last five minutes, and one wonders is time running away on St. Michael's. We'll have a draw. If, if it's a draw, we'll have a replay. In this competition, the uh, sides in the final can opt to play extra time. However, the word is that uh, the coaches on this occasion have opted for a replay if they're tied at full time. These are anxious moments for St. Michael's. They need to up the tempo of this game a little bit. Redden again on the dummy break. Good scrum by Clongos Montgomery. Again holding that ball at the back of the scrum as he's done so often this afternoon. And they're giving away the penalty. Well, uh, John, will that be for holding the ball back into the scrum again? Did the ball go forward? Yes, that's possibly true, Jerry. Again, it, it's one of these <laughs> remarkable things that's happened in rugby in the last few years. There are so many offences now one can commit in both line-out and scrum that really I, I, I have sympathy on players. Uh, I don't think either it should have been a kickable offence because uh, had the ball come out, and in fact it was a Clongo's ball, the likelihood of, of Michael scoring from it was remote, and yet now they have a, a relatively easy chance to put points on the boards. Again, it's one of the problems that uh, the legislators face in rugby football at the moment. Well, uh, one wonders whether any chance is in fact easy in a final, and especially at this stage of a game with the match in the balance. Two minutes plus injury time remaining. 
and the large crowd gone silent. Oh, carrying past the far up right and wide. Well, I think Mark Evans stabbed at that one. And so the score remains in favour of Tongos. Well, Tongos now will be in no rush to restart. Blocked down by Owen Bennett from the 22 metre restart, thrown back inside. Michael's needing this ball, but coming back on the Clango side. And uh, Michael's giving away a penalty. Well, Michael's shaking their heads there in amazement. Are in despair, but however, it is a penalty, and Barry McCarthy safely finding touch. Well, we make it one minute plus injury time remaining. And is the St. Michael's fairy tale fading away? Will Congos take the trophy for the third time? It's been 10 years since it's been down in Clongos and Danny Rock, their captain, coming away with the ball and Brendan O'Farrell, Sean Murray, Mark Evans, ball bouncing around dangerously, Lawrence Hayes putting on all sorts of pressure, but holding by Clongos, giving away the penalty and Michaels have to move that ball. Well, uh, Sean Murray there opting to kick for touch. And there's a massive kick. But uh, one wonders whether he'll regret that decision. I felt it would have been better if Michaels moved the ball. And uh, John Lavin giving away the late tackle. And so Congos now have time and field position to play with. And as expected, Adam McNulty indicating his intentions to have a shot at goal as we move into injury time. John. Yes, well, I think Longos are using the head here. They're uh, playing with a greater coolness. Uh, they realise that uh, we're in the dying moments of the game and uh, every second is important. I don't think he expects to get this kick, but uh, anything down in deep into the 25 is, uh, is where they want the ball. Yes, frustration, as we suggested earlier, has certainly crept into Michael's game. They've had the opportunities. I think that kick there by Mark is one that he'll want to forget. Uh, he didn't line it up properly. He stabbed at it, and uh, it was an opportunity that should have been grasped. And uh, it, they will be acutely disappointed because for the bulk of the second half, they've been the superior side. And yet it would now appear as though they're going to have to occupy the sad dressing room, which is a pity because uh, I think we'd all like to see both of these teams play again. I think uh, there's not an awful lot between them, and a draw would probably have been a very, very fair result. Let's see what happens to this one. Well, that, that one's not going over, but I don't expect that anybody expected it would. And Sean Murray playing it out of defence and finding touch on the 20 on the 10 metre line. Well, when Clangos won the cup back in 70, um, 78, they actually changed their strip from an all white to a striped strip. And many felt that was the lucky omen in that successful season where well, they changed their strip again here to an all-purple jersey and is this going to be another lucky omen for the lads from Clangos? We've played two minutes of injury time. Jonathan Bradley trying to find space on the far side. Well tackled by Lawrence Hayes. Michaels again with the ball. Mark Evans moves the back line. Sean Murray's in the back line. To the near side of the field here towards Colin Gorman. What can he do with it? Tackled on the 10 metre line and his loose pass back inside. Just tapped into touch and the cup is on its way to Clangos.
but the manner in which they have carried it out. Up, I must also thank the Schools Committee for the tremendous efficiency in which they run this great competition. This year the competition has been one of the best that I've seen. The and Kevin Kelleher deserves a special word of thanks for his most efficient running of the whole thing from very start. The Games Masters we must thank for the great standard of football that all the teams have, have played. Our thanks also to the medical staff, the medical people who have attended all the games and it's so important nowadays that we have medical people there. We are very, very grateful for the time they've given to us and the attention they've given to the boys. These teams reach the final. And it was such a pity that the rain came. But despite the rain, the game was only marvellous. And congratulations, boys. My commiserations to St. Saint, to Saint Michael's on, on losing this great game. And all I can say is that they've added great luster to what has been a great competition. Their performance has been marvellous right through. They've distinguished themselves by the high standard of their game and they bring great credit to themselves and to their college. Well done, St. Michael. Well, unfortunately, you can only have one victor and certainly Clongos well deserved our win. They performed with great courage and great skill and great determination. And to come through a semi-final after a replay and win today in the manner in which they did, they deserve the highest credit. Well done, Congos. And finally, finally may I thank the spectators, the parents, the boys, for their enthusiasm and their backup and the atmosphere which made this such a wonderful occasion. Well done, everybody. Now, Kevin. Jonathan Bradley Paddy Walsh Fergal Egan Declan Egan Julian Kavner Mark Duffy Stephen Rooney, Owen Bennett, David Widger, and Captain Mark Evans.
Adam McNulty. Dermot Finnegan. James Lenehan, Brendan O'Farrell, Patrick Harrahan, Barry McCarthy, Dermot Redden, Brian Duggan. Niall Lawler, Robert, Robert Dalton, Robert Dalton, John Spicer, Lawrence Hayes, Bernard Murphy. Stephen Montgomery, and the captain Daniel Rock. I just want to start by saying that I hope Michael O'Dowd is up there somewhere, preferably in some the Heavens County bar, as happy and as proud as if he was here today. week and I just hope by our gesture today by winning that cup that his wife Eden and family realised what he died for. I want to say a word of thanks to St Michael's for a wonderful match. They were brilliant but it's a pity only one team can win. Cheers for Michael, say Pep! Hey Pep! Hey Pep! To the, to the referee, Mr. Gray and his touch judges, uh, for a wonderful job of refereeing. Uh, also, also to the Leinster branch and the IRFU for everything they've done for rugby in school boys this year. I do. To seven up for wonderful sponsorship. Second last to Finney Murray and to Martin Nugent. We couldn't have done it without them. Finally, finally, to eat supporters out there. You were wonderful!
Well, with me now I have uh, Vinnie Murray and Martin Nugent, the victorious coaches. Absolute, uh, I suppose, delight and, uh, well, you're exhausted probably at this stage. Um, I, yes, sorry, we're, you know, it's uh, um, a really tough afternoon in every way and I'm fairly drained but just so delighted for, for the lads. They did so well during the season and I thought it was a terrific final, at least I thought it was a terrific final. And not to have a reaction from the Black Rock match was terrific, you know, and all we wanted our lads to do today was to come out and play with honour and so on, and they did exactly that, and they played a terrific game, I thought. So I'm just so happy for them. They certainly did. And, and Martin here beside me. Well, exactly. I mean, Martin, <laughs> was there at any stage during the match where you could relax? <laughs> I can't say that I was relaxed at any stage. Um, I was worried for a while there when Michaels began to pressure us in the second half with a high ball. But I had great confidence in our defence. We've given away very few scores throughout the year. And I think the disciplined way in which we approached the, our defence was the key factor. We gave away a few penalties OK and one particularly unfortunate one which they could have scored from. But I think the defence was so controlled that uh, I was comfortable that we were going to weather it for a good while. I also thought that we would have finished strongly. We always finished strongly, so for that reason I was quite confident. How about the tactics, Vinny? Uh, the, uh, your, did you everything go according to plan? Um, yes, we were aware of Micahs are a very good side and they're the best side we've played all year and we were very much aware of their back row and out half Evans and full back Murray and we were trying to um, play away from those players to a large extent and I think to a reasonable degree of success. Well, our congratulations to you, Vinny, and to you, Martin. Thank you. Thank you well much. done. Enjoy Thank the you. celebrations. Thank you, very much. Thank you very much. Well, I suppose, as uh, Danny Rock mentioned earlier on, you know, one team uh, wins and one team loses, and unfortunately, Michaels were uh, on the losing side today, and their coach, Noel Turley, joins me now. Commiserations, Noel. Thank you, Jerry. Um, we always knew it was going to be close. I think we must congratulate Clongos. They took their chances very well. We had a couple of half chances, and uh, they didn't go in for us, so that's the way it goes. Six threes. Uh, narrow enough victory, you know? It was one of those games, no, where I felt Michaels never got into their game plan. Did, did, did you feel things were never going your way? No, we had two very bad spells of ten minutes, one in each half, which certainly worried me, particularly the ten minutes at the beginning of the second half. Um, but uh, the, the ball was, it was difficult to handle, the type of game we wanted to play. We wanted to keep the ball in the hand. Clongos are an excellent team, particularly for spoiling. They, 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 they're excellent at it. And um, I feel that they suited them a little better than us. Yeah, certainly. Well, I mean, how about the first 10 minutes, Noel, um, when Clongos went ahead by uh, six points, or with, well, with more or less within 10 minutes? How did you feel at that stage? I felt as long as it was only six at half time, we were in with a chance. Right. In fact, with five minutes to go, I still felt we were in with a chance. Yes, I had this funny feeling you were going to do it towards the end. There. Yes. Well, that's, uh, that's it. The, the game swung different ways, and uh, we, we didn't play enough of the game in their 22, which was what we wanted to do. Uh, get them down there and keep them there. We did in the last 10 minutes, then we conceded a couple of penalties, which relieved the pressure. One bad throw into a line out towards the end of the game, our throw, they made 30 yards on it, which was a bit disappointing. You know, right, that was, that was yeah, a chance yeah. of consolidating the pressure, and it, it just went the wrong way. Well, Noel, our commiserations to yourself and Gary Coakley, and, and in fact all the lads and all the people involved in rugby and St. Michael's. Well, we've, we've enjoyed ourselves, it's been a great season. That is the only time we were defeated by a Leinster side since last September. Ha couldn't happen on a worse day, I suppose. But, uh, but we, we've had a great season. We've enjoyed it. The lads have been terrific. Full marks to Clongos. Great competition. Thank you, Jerry. Well, I know, Noel, that you're now, uh, I believe, stepping down in St. Michael's, and I know that the school will have uh, fond memories of you as a coach down there. It's a pity you just yeah. didn't manage to take the trophy at your last attempt. Well, I I'm stepping down from coach to the senior side, but I'll still be around. Haha, -ha. that's it. Noel Turley, thanks very thanks much. Thanks very much, Jerry. Cheers. Thank you. Joined by Brendan Murphy, the President of the Leinster Branch, and also by Peter Squire, the Honorary Secretary of the Leinster Branch. And uh, Brendan, I know you were enjoying yourself out there this afternoon despite the rain. It's a tremendous match. It's very exciting, very competitive. I was delighted with a marvellous crowd and great occasion. The culmination of one of the really great 
competitions for the Leicester calendar. I was delighted with everything. And, and I must just take this opportunity to thank Seven Up for their tremendous generosity in the sponsorship. It was really very, very good of them. And not only their sponsorship, but the manner of their sponsorship. We were very pleased indeed. And I'd like to put it on record and thank them for all they've done for us. Well, I'm sure they'll appreciate that, Brandon. Certainly, uh, Peter, I mean, the crowds seem to get bigger every year. Well, it did. I haven't heard the numbers yet, but I spent the first 15, 20 minutes of my time. I didn't see the match. I was with the stewards because we had to even open the upper deck, you, you may have seen, because of such a crowd. And the overhead where we were, we were sitting, that, ne that was nearly full. So until we hear the numbers, but we expect it to be probably a record. But a certainly tremendous crowd today. Well, tell me something. I mean, then, I mean, would you prepared to? Would you be prepared to hazard an opinion as to why, on a wet day like today, that a school's final can attract twenty thousand plus people? Well, this was a particularly good competition. The games were very hard fought right through. The quality was very, very, very fine indeed. The two teams that came out had a special spark about them. They were courageous, they fought hard, and were very evenly matched. And I think that uh, it was an ideal final for the day. We were fortunate, I suppose, that it was good in the morning and, and it just turned bad at the wrong time. But nevertheless, it was uh, the right teams in the right place. And, and, and there's no doubt the game itself showed that people were right to come. And marvellously, so I was very pleased. Well, I mean, I know that a large crowd here were too. I mean, uh, Peter, the, the Lancaster Branch administration is still as good as ever? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Uh, may I interject? <laughs> I interject here. <laughs> yeah. With Peter there, it couldn't be better. Well, before these gentlemen start getting into a little bit of a fracas here, <laughs> I think I'll say thank you very much to you both you. for talking thank to you. us. Thank you. Well, Kevin Kelleher is the Honorary Secretary of the school section of the Leinster branch. Yeah. And uh, Kevin, as we were joking there just before we started, I mean, you've seen many a cup campaign. I have, indeed. Very many. I won't say how many, but it goes a long way back. Yes, well, I know you were involved in the refereeing when I was playing for Turnier, which is a couple of years ago. Which makes me rather old, and you are rather old. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me something. I mean, it's another su successful campaign gone through now, at least at the very Leinster Senior yeah. Cup stage. Yes, yeah, very successful. It we thought there in, in the beginning of February we, we, we would have difficulty in making Patrick's Day, but uh, between prayers and people cooperating and all, we, we, we made it. Yes, I mean, if you had many more days like today, you would have been under pressure. We would have been under otherwise. great pressure, yeah. yeah. But uh, even with the weather, there was a most successful match and a most successful occasion. It was a wonderful occasion out there today, really. Yes, it is, isn't I, it? It was probably a record crowd. I understand that the West Up was full. I wasn't up there. And the West, the East Lower, and quite a, a number of people in the, in the East Upper. So a very, very big crowd. So without putting you on the spot, Kevin, I mean, over the years, is there anything that particularly you put your finger on in the change in schools rugby? Uh, well, one of the changes in, in schools rugby now is that there are less, this may amuse some people, there are less religious involved in running schools rugby and that therefore it's much more difficult to get the dedicated coaches because the, the people who, who uh, there aren't many coaches even in the clubs and the people who, who are really uh, dedicated are the people who won't, don't want to be paid and there are not many of those people around nowadays. Yes, of course. So, uh, there are even some schools now who have ladies taking rugby. Oh. It, it's so hard to get m uh, men coach. So that, that is a big change. Yes, yeah. yes I suppose. Yeah, getting the, the, yeah. the, the, the lack of vocations mm. and things like that with the religious schools. Mind yeah. you, the Protestant schools might not agree. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell me something, though, that uh, a person that's often forgot on occasions like this is the referee. Uh -huh. Now, I know you're a former international referee and have given great uh, service to, to rugby, especially at schools level as well. Yeah. The referee this afternoon had a good game. He had an excellent game. He did a very good game and in very difficult circumstances with that ball skating around. He did, he did a very good game and he did himself no harm as far as his future is concerned. All right, lovely. Well, Kevin, thank you very much for having chatted with us. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Right, okay, sorry. Bye. This is the reason why 20,000 plus were here in Lansdowne Road this afternoon, and this is why uh, Danny Rock and his boys went through such uh, blood, sweat and tears and anxious moments to win this trophy. Danny, congratulations. Thanks very much indeed. It was a tough match, but uh, it all worked out in the end for us. Yes, I mean, were you worried? I mean, we were worried at stages. Worried, uh, not really the word. I mean, we've only let in four tries this cup season. Um, so we were confident with our backs and their tackling. We should have scored after the first half, the opening of the second half. Um, it wasn't really worry, but we were just anxious a little. 
to get back into the game. And would you like to let us in on what uh, Vinnie Murray and uh, Martin Nugent said to you at half time? Nothing much. I think we all knew it ourselves, rather, because we, we should come back in, in the second half. We usually come back in the second half. Um, just blood, gut, and tears, you know, we just had to work. Really. And how did you feel about going into the game today? I mean, were Clongos silently confident or hoping things would go their, their way? Uh, we were hoping things would go our way, but we, are, we were determined, silently determined, uh, confident, but not complacent, certainly not. We knew we had a, I mean, we knew this was going to be our hardest match. Um, it certainly proved to be so. But we were prepared um, and we did it. We did it, yeah. Well, Danny, congratulations and thank you for talking to us. I know you've got a lot of uh, celebrating yeah. to do. <laughs> I know the guys are trying to drag you away. So I'll let you go off and fill the cup and maybe we'll join yeah. you later. Right. Thank That's you very fine. much for talking to us. Well, there it is. The cup is off to Clongos for the third time in its history. Not this particular trophy, by the way, because remember, this is the, uh, the other trophy was uh, taken for Black Rock two years ago. But uh, in fact, the original trophy, by the way, cost around £65. One wonders how much this trophy cost. I'm sure Danny Rock will guard this one. <laughs> well done in Clongos. So at the end, it's Clongos are victorious. Our commiserations to St. Michael's. And this is Jerry Kelly and Doki Video Productions. And 7-Up saying goodbye from Lansdowne Road.